was an untouched land, an incredible land. land, an incredible land, and we changed its face. that we left vast tracks, cut over, burned over. In the south, rich croplands. And we left farm after farm gutted and eroded. West was the grass, buffalo and blue stem, as high as a buffalo's flanks. From Jamestown to the present, we changed the face of a continent, for good or for bad, and we're still at it. From Union Point, Georgia to Hobart Mills, California, the work of hands and machines is changing the land. But what does erosion control in Georgia or a big dam going up in the Dakota Hills have to do with city folks? Look at it this way. 200 years ago, most Americans knew about the land. They lived close to it. They worked it. Then came steam power. And steam meant factories, and factories meant cities. And today, most Americans know next to nothing about the land. And yet, we're all closer to the land than we think. Wander around the country. Check up on the Iowa topsoil, the forested hills of New England. Look to the land. On Springfield Mountain, there did dwell a lovely youth. I knew him well, this lovely youth. One day did go down to the meadow for to mow. Things seem to be prospering around here. New England villages as cleanly tailored as ever. A tidy looking country. But let's take a closer look. Here's a good place to stop. Auction going on. Wonder what's the trouble. Now, do I hear seven? Seven dollars over here. Who say 750? Do I hear 750? 750 there. Eight dollars over here. Do I hear nine? Nine dollars. Do I hear nine dollars? Who bid nine dollars? Do I hear nine? All done? Do. All right, we've got a... The county agent's always a good man to talk to. Ask him about things past and present in this section of New England. That's a big question, isn't it, Charlie? Sure is. Take this farm here, for example. Lots of prosperous farms all over New England. But this one's being auctioned off today. Furniture, kitchen plates, the old family pictures. Family settled here about 175 years ago. Plowed down the rocky slopes that never should have been plowed. The land played out. Hasn't been much of a living out of it for years. Up on the big hills, back a hundred years or more, they were cutting down the trees. And the old-time logger operated on a policy of cut out and get out. And then along the rivers, the factories came, pouring out industrial wastes, wool scourings, processed water from paper and textile mills, fish and wildlife killed. 
Recreation for city folks spoiled. Drinking water for cities polluted. And yet, in spite of the scars of 200 years, Connecticut Valley looks rich and is rich, even though we've got problems, same as any other section of the country. Let's look at another section of the country. Cross a couple of state lines, past the rich fields of the Pennsylvania Dutch country. Let's look south. Oh, Weevil, I'm a little black bug, come from Mexico, they say. Come all the way to Alabama, just looking for a place to stay, just looking for a home. Just looking for a home. Oh, Weevil, south. South of gullied cotton lands and old plantation mansions. That was your picture of the South 20 years ago. But with this visit, things look different. The South grows green. Things have changed. Stick around, maybe you'll find some answers. Hitch another ride. Give a fellow a lift? Sure, hop in. Move over, Jamie. As you drive along, talking about this and that, you piece together this man's story. I had a good cotton farm in Alabama, Dallas County. My father had it before me, his father before him. I'd always expected my son to have it one day. Giddy up. But that's not the way things turned out. Giddy up. Jamie, like to go over and see what's up? Gee, that'd be wonderful. time Jamie would be seeing this old place. Belonged to a family that used to own all the land around here. There it is, Jamie. Yes, sir. A big dam was going up in the valley. A mighty big one. A lot of land was to be flooded. Our land, too. Of course, we got a good price for our place. That helped some. But it didn't make it any easier to leave my farm, dam or no dam. I always liked farming. Guess I was born to it. Got it from my father. So was the South from the looks of things. Cotton used to grow out there, but the land washed and wore out. Now it's first-rate pasture for beef cattle. Cotton's still important to the South, of course, but with a lot of changes. There are a lot of tractors and mechanical cotton pickers. Same goes for factories. You see spanking new ones all over. Could have worked here, a lot of other places. But I want to try a few things before we finally settled. First off, the older boy and I got a job planting pine seedlings on worn out cotton land. Farmers were taking a planting pine as a crop. It was a good crop as I found out. From the pine forest, I went to work in a pine mill. Smart growers were never cut more each year than would grow back each year. Things were happening in the South. A lot of new jobs opening up, and we were on the move, too. I figured if I could make a good farmer, I could make a good steel worker. Anyway, we're gonna find out. to the Dakotas. 
stock-watering pond and a good herd of cattle can get forgetful. He can forget pretty easy the hard times he had once. Seems the upriver Missouri Valley farmer often has too much water or not enough. Floods one year with your wife's best rosewood dresser miles downstream. Or maybe it's drought and your farm goes downwind. When your topsoil goes downriver or downwind, there's no getting it back. It's gone forever, far as you're concerned. City people don't realize that, maybe. But the way they live depends on what shape our topsoil's in. And what we do to save it and improve it. Take soil washing, for example. Erosion by water. To stop it, you've got to plow at right angles to the slope of your land. Or if you farm land where wind erosion is a problem, you got to plow at right angles to the prevailing winds. And for both problems, you strip crop. Alternate rows of different crops. Curlicue farming, my father called it. He didn't hold with it much, but in his time, there was always new land to go west to. Now there's not. What about the far west? What about our rangelands? Yippee-ti-yi-ho, get along, little doggies. It's your misfortune and none of my own. Yippee-ti-yi-ho, get along, little doggies. You know Wyoming will be your new home. There's a man to talk to. There, on the fence. Beef on the hoof is his business. The USA feeds a lot of cattle and sheep. We're one of the biggest producers in the world. But some of our rangelands are so overgrazed a cow can get skinny just to looking for food. A hundred acres of good range can furnish plenty of forage for anywhere from four to eight cows. Put more of them on and you're liable to get this. No choice stakes out a range like this, even with a grain-fed finish. Ride em, cowboy. You see as many cowboys on bulldozers now as on horses, clearing fire lanes for protection against range fires, or on foot, burning over acres of weeds in preparation for seeding, or on tractors, plowing out sage and rabbit brush, reseeding the range with grass best suited to the soil. Add to this program hundreds of miles of new fencing, new stock watering facilities. We stand a fair chance of bringing our range back to what it once was. My father and his father saw overgrazed range break more than one rancher. So whether it's valley floor or summer range up in the mountains, we've got to adjust our livestock to range capacity. But some ranchers and farmers think only about their cash crops today. Guess that goes for some lumbermen, too. Timber, timber, man, that timber's gonna roll. Timber, timber, man, that timber's gonna roll. To a forest ranger, the first fact about America is this. As a nation, we're still a woodland people. Besides lumber and plywood, the timber we haul out of our forests supplies wood pulp for industry, paper, rayon, chemicals. The second fact, we've still got a lot of good timber growing, enough to meet our needs if we manage it properly. Conclusion, we've got a job of work to do, 
a job for both private lumber companies and the government. set in the control area to train fire prevention crews. More work of this kind must be done. More crews trained with better equipment, more fire towers built. And along with this, a lot of plain hard work. Trimming, pruning, and salvage cutting, disease control work, work clearing fire trails and fire breaks, and building access roads, miles of them into our deepest forests. a well-managed forest, producing timber, providing recreation areas for city people, 50 years from now. Meanwhile, from now until the time these seedlings grow up, work towards the day when we will produce all our timber as a crop on a sustained yield basis. That's the job ahead with our forests. The American land contains a vast complex of river systems. And the water of the rivers is the lifeblood of the land of each river basin. A river basin includes all the land that drains to the river. The forests and grazing lands, recreation areas, farms, towns and cities, and commerce flowing in the river's channels. Everything within a river basin is related to everything else. If upstream industries and cities pour wastes and sewage into the river, downstream fish and wildlife disappear, recreation areas are spoiled, cities must spend more and more to purify drinking water. If upstream forest lands are cut over and erode, the valley farmlands and cities are inundated by floods. A river basin, like a person, can be sick or underdeveloped. And, like a person, each river basin can be brought to health and full usefulness. Here is new opportunity for the work of American hands and machines. A new challenge for both public action and private enterprise construction of single-purpose and multiple-purpose dams, storage dams to retain water in time of floods, to release water for dry seasons, blocks and dams to maintain minimum depths in river channels for year-round navigation, to supply water to cities, to control and regulate the water resources of the entire river basin. Water controlled means water which can be released when needed. To bring green life to arid, unproductive lands. Water controlled means power. Power to develop new industries. Power for ranches and farms power to light the cities of the plain. Water and power to sustain and develop the life of the river basins of the American land. Once this was an untouched land and we changed its face. Now a bigger job lies ahead to heal the scars of the past, to look to the land for our future. I am bound for the promised land. 